gestating the curious minds involves adult themes and situations. Just a warning. We're good. There we are. Say something. Hello. There. We're recording again for the first time in like a year. Has it been a year? I don't know. Well, let's not look it up. We don't have time. All right, fine. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Just Sitting the Curious Minds, where we find out the hard way that our water bottles hold two cans of hard seltzer. (laughs) (laughs) We are your entertainers, Glenn and Gertie Nuzzles. Allow us to shine a light on the process of creation for the most splendiferous fiction genre, paranormal smut. That's amazing that you already put the water bottles in there. This just happened an hour ago. Yes, I've been I've been working. I am a working girl who right. is working. All right, okay. <laughs> I'm out there every day getting that crow's nest ready and free mm-hmm. of squirrels. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. doing my part for the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, not me. Anyway, <laughs> so we, <laughs> uh, uh, welcome back, everyone. It feels good to be back. Does it feel good? Yeah, I'm I mean, really I'll, excited. I love that you snapped. I said. Uh, one, to explain the water bottle th- or the water bottle thing, uh, we have these big metal container cups with straws. They're slim. Slims. Slim. Slims? But they, uh, yep, they're slims. We got them at Target. Or they're just S, M, S and M. <laughs> <laughs> on brands. S with a line, then M. Um, on brand, wow. Uh, we were oh, like. Oh, they're simple moderns. Oh. I always thought they were called slims. I, well, there's, Okay. I just didn't it's read. Fine. <laughs> well, we decided that we were going to just basically we drink little white claws or whatever kind of seltzers because sometimes we want to have a cocktail without getting all loaded. And so then we decided that like we're really sick of those and we can't find anything new that's good. And plus I think the seltzer fad is finally dying. And so we got like very limited stock. Then it hit us. What if we took just like when you go to the gas station and with you're gonna buy like soda from the soda fountain thing? You just get multiple seltzers or seltzers and start mixing and matching them. Yeah. So we have multiple different brands and flavors that we've been mixing and matching. Yeah. And our thing holds two whole cans, we found out. (laughs) It's pretty intense. We're both on water bottle number two. Yep. So it's not a good sign right now. Well, it is a beautiful sunny Sunday here in gorgeous Minnesota. Too cold to be in our pool that we have from Menards. From Menards. (sighs) Yeah. Also from Menards is my bird stand. That is real, real tall, and I put a big plate thing on top of it to put in, like, peanuts and other things, and I am trying to still... This is year number three of trying to get a crow army. They don't like Glenn. They're going to figure out that I'm providing what they want. We'll see. I'm working up to a point where... So, uh, basically, squirrels were actually climbing up the metal pole, which I didn't think was possible, but those little padded feet uh, were climbing all the way up there and eating all those goddamn peanuts. I could hear crows screaming this morning. I'm like, hooray, crows are finally eating... They were getting chased away by the fucking squirrels, like always. So I finally got like a little cone thing you put on there to keep the squirrels from going up. So I'm thinking I finally got it. Once I can guarantee that there are no squirrels up there eating that shit, Mm -hmm. cooked egg. I'm going to start cooking eggs and just sitting them up there on top of that crow's nest. Giving those crows the finest delicacies. I think you love the crows more than you love me. Well, let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Glenn's really excited about someone who is nice to... uh... Either him or us on YouTube. Yeah, uh, both of us. Well, for one, all of today after drinking all the seltzers, I said I'm going to go report another or record another uh, Glenn reads books to you episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, here I go. Then you suddenly said, "I want to record a podcast." And then I dropped my seltzer on the floor and said, "My God, it's been like eight months. Yeah. You do?" And you're like, "Yes." So here we are. And neither of us cleans it up. The floor's so sticky. Yeah, it's real gross. It's real, it's real gross. But no, usually on YouTube, I get the most horrible comments, usually from racist people. Uh, the Glenn Reads Books recorded an episode of like that, like Butler, Jeeves. Oh, they don't like hearing that the authors of these maybe beloved books in the zeitgeist are uh, morons. were terrible people. They're horrible people. People get really offended. Mm-hmm. I've I've had a lot of those battles. I don't bother with it anymore. Oh, I, really? I just don't talk to those people anymore. (laughs) Like, okay. Uh, If you, if you feel like it's a personal attack for me saying that this person who died decades before you were even sentient, 
um, who Make is a some terrible bad person, decisions. Yeah, then, exactly. you know what? Uh, you're not my kind of person. Oh, one of my favorite was the... Because uh, we don't even say don't read it, don't listen to it. Yeah. We're, we're just pointing it out. <laughs> well, the other part is like, so the person that wrote that book, he was like kind of a little too nice to Nazis. He got taken hostage by the Nazis during World War II, the author of uh, the G's books. And then he like made funny little radio skits for them and everything. And I'm just like, oh, what an asshole. Like, you know, fuck you. Then he came back to America. And then he was like, I was like, everyone hated him for being a traitor. Mm-hmm. He comes to America after writing a new book. And then he was disappointed because all this footage of the Holocaust camps came out just as he came to New York and he was ready to promote his book. He's like, no one cares about my book. Everyone's talking about the Holocaust. Oh, boo. And I was like, fuck this guy. So I said that on my episode. And so I got a guy that said, uh, one of his comments is thumbs down, pathetic that you try to truckle to the anti-white agenda and put down our culture. Do you really think that will make others like you? So okay. some racist guy who loves racists that write about butlers <laughs> got mad at me. Is that your name? I guess. I don't know. I don't well, want to call out your names. Who cares? Buddy, all of this, all of these things that happened, it was decades ago. Yeah. So the, if the anti-white agenda is real, which is not, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been going on for decades. This is not something new. Yeah. Um, do you think that they were interesting? So interesting question. Right? Hmm. Are you going to um, cry about cancel culture from uh, some <laughs> b- pre social media? Right? Yeah. How dare people find something out about you that suggests that you're uh, maybe a bad person? Yeah. And not have and have feelings about it. <laughs> yep, exactly. Plus, anyway. this was national news back then. It wasn't like I found some dirty little secret yeah. about what else was there author. to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, he just got, he actually said publicly, I don't like that thing. Yeah, with his whole chest, he was like, the Nazis are fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're just fine. They put me in a hotel. Everything's great. We got another person that apparently listened to the Jeeves episode. It's all the Jeeves episodes, but getting the worst comments. And she says, I'm thinking it's a she, I don't know why. Uh, well, it's because it's Diana. But anyways, sure. uh, it's part of her username, so I thought it was a she. It says, biggest load of rubbish, uh, or biggest load of rubbish, I shouted shut up after minutes and canceled a lot. So apparently she's from England, and she's real angry that I made fun of P.G. Wodehouse, the guy that truckles Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, Diana. We appreciate it. Anyway, yeah. we're going to talk about the, pe- the person who is nice to us. Uh, yeah. Uh, where is How do you pronounce their username this is a a great big leap of faith uh we're gonna do like a say like a say 5900 nice person listened to one of our uh just in the curious minds episodes and said y'all have such a charming repertoire with each other i don't know how there isn't more attention on this project when there is such a great mix of indulgent delightful and dirty absolutely perfect to listen to while i'm doodling looking forward to listening to more so God bless you. You are very lovely. We appreciate it. <laughs> we're we're not the we're we're two Sagittarii. Oh, two Sagittarius's yeah. uh, trying to get us to complete a project. All yeah. the stars must align. So, right. well, we, that was definitely a spark because I told you about that. Like, hey, when there isn't Nazis or angry angry British women yeah. yelling <laughs> at my podcast on YouTube. Um, we got one person that actually likes our we show. Got somebody who likes us. And then you're like, oh, we should do another one. And I was like, yeah, we should probably call them out. So there, we called them out. We Have did. fun doodling uh, while you listen to this episode. Right. That was two months ago that they posted <laughs> this. <laughs> Just to give a time frame on uh, what our what our hobbies are like. But whatever. I'm a very busy woman. Oh, are you? I was going to say, <laughs> it's been like a year and a half. Yeah. What's... Uh, Gertie been up to? Oh, God, almost nothing. No, I, <laughs> not I live with you, and I yeah, know it's almost. We nothing. listen to Pal. Uh, we play Pal World with a friend of ours. Yep. yep. Um, I I go out with my other friend maybe like once a week or so, and then I have a group of girlfriends I see maybe once a month. Uh, other than that, I'm uh, watching TikTok, sitting around the house. Yeah, leaving little piles in the one spot of the couch you sit on. Piles? <laughs> Piles of what? Piles of poop. <laughs> kind of like when a dog takes a shit on the ground and then slowly rises up to create like a little tower. Did you see that TikTok I yeah, sent you? you? Okay. <laughs> it's a little Yorkie who, who pooped a tower that was straight up. Anyway, that, that's what consumes my mind 24-7. There's always something happening online. 
uh, the Kendrick and Drake drama. I sunk my entire I'm basket not, into. I will not allow myself to start talking oh, about no, it, but I can't. love it so much. No, we can't. Yeah. Just the fact, I will not say anything else, but the fact that Drake apparently had a show where he's trying to take ownership of the Not Like Us song by playing it while he's on stage at the end of the show. And like giving the middle fingers and stuff. Yeah. It's like, you're not winning, dude. You just played the song. Yeah. It's not, it's not real life. Moron. I can't believe it's real life. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I work. You work. I, I come home. Yeah. Uh, I, I rid my brain of everything I've ever known in my life. Oh. And I absorb TikTok content. Yeah, that's all you do. I'm trying to get you to play Luigi's all Mansion. I do. But you're not into it. it well, it's very frustrating. Um, it's a kid's game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all new mechanics. No, because... No, here we go. It, it, you, you move Luigi with one whatever. Beyond <laughs> that, we play a lot of Pal World, and I started reading House of Leaves, which yeah. I feel like uh, should make me sound way more intelligent than I am. Uh, I so will tell I'm going to ride that for the I next I will tell year. you, Words About Books podcast read that. And I think if I remember correctly, I could be wrong, and maybe they'll yell at me if they hear this episode and be like, that's not what I said. But I think they came away from like, it's kind of pretentious. And so what are you thinking so far since you've gotten into it? Because I did start to read, I'm like, this is just so complicated. I don't have the energy, so I gave up. It's but, so, I like that there are multiple stories happening within a story, and I have to recognize things that are popping up. Yeah. Uh, you know, within footnotes or within a story. I I have to kind of keep track of all the threads. Mm-hmm. So I am enjoying it in that aspect, maybe because I like multiple things happening at once. Yeah. I'm also the kind of person where if the TV's on, I am doing something else. I cannot dedicate yeah, 100% right. of my brain to one thing. Yep. So, Why we can't watch uh, the Samurai thing on Hulu. Well, sure, <laughs> because I can't read subtitles, subtitles if I'm doing two other things at once. Exactly. Um, which, you know, whatever. Uh, that's none of my business. So the entire point is that so far I am enjoying it. Uh, I like a little spooky summer. Spooky summer is a lot I of fun. I do the majority of my book reading in the summer. Yeah. I don't know why you'd think it would be opposite. You know, in the winter you're all shut in and no. you don't have anything to do. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason, my summers are the spookiest. Yeah, my winters I usually spend watching a lot more porn. But in the summertime, I do <laughs> enjoy reading a lot more. For the plot, of course. For the plot, of course. Yeah. yeah. I like a some good Some great plot. cinematography. You ever get a Dutch angle just zooming in on that butthole? Getting right in the butthole and the glisten off those lips, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I totally understand. No, yep, you're right. I know, we're trying to do, we're, we're sort of got like a little witchy summer going on. We got the uh, the above ground white trash pool, but we have around that white trash pool uh, oh. all sorts of natural plants yeah, growing. Yeah, we did a lot of planting. We built a whole plant. Yeah. Why aren't we talking about that? Why am I sitting here talking about TikTok for 13 minutes? Because that's all you fucking do. Because that's all I do. I try to get you to play a child's game, do something different, and you're like, this <laughs> sucks! Get me my dominoes from two days ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know. I saw that you had the dominoes out last night because yeah. you were eating like the leftover dominoes mm-hmm. for dinner, and then I put it in the fridge and I went to bed. And I woke up this morning because you got up before me, and the, yeah. the dominoes was back out on the oven. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you ate it for breakfast? God I, damn it. Yeah, I've had dominoes three days in a row. And I know you didn't heat that shit up. Of course not. You live like an animal. Pizza should be cold. No, it shouldn't. It's like eating human mm, flesh. No. <laughs> okay. Well. Whatever. So we have a... Oh, Glenn? Oh, Glenn hasn't been up too much either. Okay, go ahead. No one cares. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> No one's here for you. In other news, uh, Unsighted Podcast has invited us to be a part of their uh, 100th anniversary. I don't know what That's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, we're doing like a... What is it? A um, not a Not a grotesque corpse. What's it called? Oh, exquisite corpse. Exquisite corpse. A grotesque corpse. There's a there's a song called "Grotesque Corpse" and it's a bunch of rappers uh, donating verses, basically, mm-hmm. to create this story. Oh, oh, sure, what sure, sure. What is it sure. called? It might be called "Exquisite Corpse." Whatever. We should just call it "Gross Corpse." Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing a go- uh, gross, gross corpse. corpse episode, guys? We is that what we're doing corpse? here? Yeah. Gross corpse. Anyway, it is called Exquisite Corpse by Watsky. It's a fun song. If Who's you're Watsky? Uh, my ex-boyfriend. 
He sounds like a nerdy college professor. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we're here again. So we have a dilemma because over the last uh, two years since we did our last episode, <laughs> we have come up with ideas usually while uh, having hamburgers and beer at a local place that we eat at. Uh, and then we come up with these big ideas and then we record them, like voice record them because we have to sit there and type forever mm-hmm. uh, and send them to each other on WhatsApp. But we don't know which one we want to do yet. So do you want to talk about the two options? And I actually don't remember them because they were so long ago and we were probably a little bit drunk. We were definitely drunk. Uh, we have two options. We have one, which is a prequel to the prequel of the Omen. Mm. And it's about a bunch of nuns. Yep. Uh and George Washington for some reason. <laughs> so the the nuns are also demonic, but they want better tax breaks. So they're trying to get in cahoots oh, with George Washington. because religion, yeah. Christian yeah. churches. And then there's another one about um, a j- who bestows a curse. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, so the voice note we have, it goes on about turning this man slowly into a cat. So we have all of these... <laughs> uh, Things that are happening to him, you know, he sees strings and he wants to go after them and it's he, this and that and the other thing, whatever. But also under it is just a simple typed message that states, gives you gas pains. <laughs> <laughs> like really bad gas and it hurts. What so does? We never said. The Jip curse. Oh, oh, oh. Like oh. the Jip curses you to have gas pain. So you become a cat and you also have a lot of gas and gas pains. <laughs> I can't remember how they're related. Damn it. I know. This is a, a we are we are brilliant and unreliable. And forgetful is mm. our main problem. Yeah. Unreliably forgetful. So which one are we going to do? Uh, viewers, text your uh, votes to 22533. We're not going to wait that long. Um, two two five. Wow. We're tallying the votes now. Well, and before the viewers tally comes in, I'm doing a whole American Idol thing. Now I know. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the cat one with the mysterious gas pains. Yeah, which would be fun and easy to write. Drawn to string as a man walking down the street. Uh, some little kid's got a string hanging off his sweater. Mm-hmm. And he just keeps staring at it. like. And then somebody's like, what are you, a pedophile? Stop staring at that kid. He's like, I'm not a pedophile. He runs away because he's part cat. Uh, <laughs> easy. Easy to write. The nun one is funny because they want tax breaks because they're a Christian church. <laughs> 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 In America. but um, But a lot more work. I think. It can be. It's like that fine line between we're just writing like a 20-page short story, but also there could be just a lot of minutia and detail in there to set things up. Oh, yeah. I know nothing about tax law and next to nothing about nuns, uh, mm-hmm. but I am obsessed with nuns. I know you are. Yeah, you Glenn knows this. We had a Nun Tuesday mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, which was the best night of my life. We watched a whole bunch of horror movies about Nuns. So many were so bad, but the prequel to The Omen mm. was actually really, really good. It was, I was surprised. Really good. I was like, did not expect to have a good movie. It looked like it was going to be trash, but it was really it good. It turned out to be really good. Yeah. <laughs> but the other nun movies were horrible. Yeah, we but watched in, the one with Sydney mm. Sweeney that was bad. Mm. And then there was um, uh, a Czech one or a Polish one? Yeah. Oh, it was set. It was English, but it was set in there. Well, they dubbed it. Yeah. Oh, did they dub it? Yeah. Oh, that was fun. I was only half paying attention. I'm like, oh, this is horse shit. And then I just went right back to playing solitaire on my phone. Yes. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're on TikTok, but I'm older than you and I play solitaire. It is more intellectual. Oh, is it more? Uh, okay. Well, good, for, <laughs> good for old Glenn. Good for Glenn. Anyway, which one are we doing? I don't know. Do you want to go easy or do you want to go complicated? Because in Let's the end, go with the gypsies curse. I was gonna say because Let's you're writing this. Well, I love nuns. I would really enjoy writing about nuns. I mean, it could take a lot of work but if you want to do it. I'm not writing it. You're writing it. <laughs> Let's go with the gypsies curse. So gypsies, it's the curse gypsies curse. It is. Curse. So set up the protagonist. Who is our protagonist? We're not doing the dice rolling anymore because we don't have any control over what happens, and it turns out we have better ideas than what the dice come up with. So we've given that whole thing up altogether. It turns out 
Okay, so we need a protagonist. Um, we need a is protagonist. Is the protagonist going to be the Catman, or is it going to be the Jim? Oh, that's a good point. Because then we got to tell the story of her. Can we say? We can't say. See, I might have to bleep those out. Oh my god, Romane. When I do my podcast, I say Romane every time the uh, the G word comes up. <clears throat> You're not supposed to say it anymore. Uh, politically. Are you literally Googling politically Perfect correct way of saying the word. G word? <laughs> Virginia. I know you'll never do this, but I chat. It is Romani. Yeah, I know. You're right. Okay. Romani. So the Romani lady. We can do it from her point of view, but that does involve showing her history and why she would reach a point of cursing someone to be a cat. Or more easier is the protagonist being the person that's being cursed as a cat who it's a little bit easier to write because you are just like, of what? He's a lawyer or she's a lawyer or whatever. And then just like is rude to this person who's like at the grocery store looking at lemons. And then she's like, cat! And then also, we got to get Mateo Gibbs back, because he wasn't in the last book. Well, maybe... I feel like my main reference for this story is Drag Me to Hell. Have you ever seen that movie? I've never watched it. I've heard about it. So it's... uh, Is it Carpenter? No. Nope. Uh, Sam Raimi. Yeah. Yep. So uh, it's a story about a woman who works in a bank, and her boss is really coming down hard on her because she keeps giving out loans to people who are you know, on the edge of maybe not being able to pay them back. Sure. So he says, if you want to keep your job, if you want any kind of promotion, you have to start saying no. So this old woman comes in, she asks for this loan. She turns, the bank lady turns her down. Turns out that the uh, lady who is asking for the loan is Romani. And she, Romani? Romani. Romani. I always say Romane. Wow. On my podcast. There's a lot of references that to the G like word a in my fine podcast. Perfume. Yeah. I would read all these old books and they're like the G word, the G word, the G word, and I have to keep going, Romane. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of you. Thank you. So uh she uh the Roma Romani Romane. Romani pers- uh, lady curses the bank lady. Um for her lack of generosity, she starts seeing these hellish visions. In the end, uh, there is no cure. Spoiler alert, she is dragged to hell. Physically dragged to hell. Great movie. Okay. Is it like the movie Thinner? Um, kind of similar in that, like, everything's bleak. Oh. You know? Sometimes but there is no moment movies... where the Romani person rubs her hands across the woman's cheek and goes, Thinner! Or to hell! Or something. Uh, yeah, there's always that, like, Romani person, like, pointing a gnarled finger, right? Oh, okay. Doing, like, doing the curse. Much Got like it. Eurovision 2024, Bambi <laughs> Thug, where oh, we were watching live. So good. Sitting there, <laughs> so wrapped. Good. If you guys haven't, seek it out, please. Bambi Thug, uh, they were the Irish contestant this Irish year. Irish contestant, yep. Uh, we were sitting there in abject silence. Yep. Uh, and we are like... We are being hexed right now. <laughs> I know. We were watching it with uh, Wanda and Emmanuel. Yeah. Um, from yeah. Learn the Night Sky, which is a podcast she's not really doing anymore. Yeah. Uh, which is too bad. She did like two episodes. Did a really good job. It was really cute. And then just like. You, pr- you also heard Wanda on a couple of our other. Uh, um, Previous ones. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just promote Wanda. All yeah. we're and doing. And Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Just, they were both in the that's disasters. True. Yeah. All we do is create platforms for these two people to excel. But. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we were watching it with them online, and then all of a sudden, the Irish lady comes on, and it is like, there's like a devil character dancing around her and stuff, and like, she's like, doing weird screaming, they. like with, uh, what's that? Oh, they? they. Sorry. Uh, and uh, the wind is like, blowing against them and everything, yeah. and then they were like, pointing their hand out and screaming, and I'm like, this is nuts. And then you go, I think we're being cursed. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantastic experience. It was amazing. It was really great. Anyway, so, anyways, uh, so that's the, the that's the frame of reference. Protagonist. So it's, it's very easy for the protagonist to be like an old woman with one dead eye who just has yeah, a gnarled finger. Right. And it's really easy for the antagonist to just be like a frat bro. Yeah. Right? True. So are we going to go in that direction? Or are we going to... Uh, do you want to spice it up? 
Yeah, good point. Um, we could spice it up. What would be... What's the subtext here, dude? The subtext is... Okay, so why a cat, specifically? I mean, when we were drunk, we probably had all the answers. But I, right now, why a cat? I reckon we just thought it was funny and <laughs> stupid. Uh, which is fair enough. It can <clears throat> just be stupid on its own. I... Okay, here's a scenario. I'm fine with that. A simple scenario. Yeah. Which you can certainly turn down. I'm not trying to talk you into it. Uh, what if the... Let's say it's a man... Uh-huh. ...who loves cats, and he will not shut up about cats, runs into uh, this older woman at, like, the grocery store as she's, like, squeezing oranges. And she's just trying to get a good orange. Like, mm-hmm. she's sick of this shit. Mm-hmm. She's squeezing them. Another dumb orange. Another. She's getting to the bottom of the pile. These are a little bit fresher because, you know, how they game it. They always put the old ones up front. Yeah. So she's trying to squeeze them. She's squeezing them. She finally gets... Uh, she thinks she might get a good one. And this guy comes out of nowhere and goes, I you squeeze those like a cat or something. And then just starts throwing cat facts at her. And she finds him so annoying that she curses him to be a cat. On his side, he, since childhood, always wanted to be a vet, but only for cats. But that doesn't exist in the world. And so then he's just mad and he wound up being an accountant. Oh, so he's angry. I don't want to fucking deal with dogs or squirrels or whatever else people bring in. Don't write this down. You got to let me know. I, I don't know. It seems a little loose. This is gold. This is not gold. He loves cats so much he wants to save them, but he doesn't want to deal with He's other animals. He's an actuary. It's more boring than accounting. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so she's just sque- squeezing oranges. She just wants the juiciest orange. She's just feeling own. their okay. weight. She's Maybe like, she's not even... These are all really light for their size. What I if... know there's no good juice in here. <laughs> And she's, she's it's just like, an empty husk. She's, it's she's dry on the inside. <laughs> blinking off the little orange nipples and she's sniffing it. Mm. She's like, I just want some fresh squeezed orange juice. Um, yep. I can feel the scurvy on coming. I am just, yeah. I just want she's like, the inside of my mouth to burn. Every and this day guy's I make like, a full fucking pitcher of orange juice and I need... 30 to 40 oranges to do that. And this guy just had a really bad day. He's crunching numbers. He's bored. He sees her. And he's like, you know, cats can't sense the smell of citrus. <laughs> and it sends her over the edge. It's not even like he's outright terrible. Yeah, sure. Like, he doesn't deserve this. Sure. Um, it's just wrong place, wrong time. What if instead of his cat obsession with being a vet, he is so bored at work that something snapped one day where he was like an actuary. I don't know what an actuary really does, but whatever he's doing, he's so fucking bored that he winds up just looking up like cute cat pics Mm. and then becomes obsessed. So then he's like looking up cat pics after work. Then all of a sudden it's not just cat pics anymore. Now it's cat facts goes into like, uh, like cat trivia which becomes like he gets into like cat Isn't information. Isn't cat trivia cat facts? Uh, cat facts is like fun facts. Did you know a cat can't Fun pee? facts or trivia? Fun facts. Wait no finish that. Did you know can't, cats can't pee? Laying on their back. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So anyways um, it just becomes like the cat thing is not about him, like, since childhood, always wanting to deal with cats and becoming a vet. Maybe he's just so bored at work, he starts to snap, and his brain looks for other things to find some kind of basic endorphins. And so it's all cat-related. Then he just becomes obsessed with cats. So now his friends have lost touch with him, because every time he gets off of work, he hangs out with them, and he's just like, Did you know that the, the, the pads on cats' feet can actually taste just random made-up things? Because he's going to the wrong website. It's like QAnon yeah. of cat information. <laughs> Websites. So he's severely depressed because he can't have his dream job, dream job, and he loses himself in fake cat facts. Cat facts. Fake cat facts. And there's like a whole Q and on of cat facts. Like it turns out, like, like kind of like the Earth is flat, but like what would that be for cats? That they taste through their feet. They no, I think you're on feet. the right track. I okay. like this. I okay. like this. Keep it rolling. So it's not so much that he wants to be a cat person from birth. It's just that he just gets lost in cat information because it's like a weird way of not like dealing with being an actuary. Mm-hmm. This woman that he talks to at the grocery store doesn't have to be Romani specifically. She can be a person that has 
no magical inclination whatsoever. Oh, but her rage in that moment her is Her rage so in that strong. moment creates the spell, basically. Like, you're a cat, points at him. <laughs> like, she doesn't know what else to say in her rage, so she just points at him and goes, you're the cat! And then all of a sudden, uh, <clears throat> kind of like a hypnosis thing, he just convinces himself he's turning into a cat. I love it. Oh, what if he never physically turns into a cat? He just thinks he's turning into a cat. Oh, I like that angle. Yeah, and then he thinks this is the greatest thing ever, but also there's got to be a downside, which he convinces himself involves like, gas pains. <laughs> yeah, but we don't realize that until the very end. Like, I can't live in this utopia where I'm a big cat. There's got to be a downside. Then he, like, farts. He's like, it must be the gas pains. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gas pains. And then he convinces himself. It's all psychosomatic. All right, that's what I'm going with, unless you got a counter idea. No, I love it. All right, so she's not a witch. She's not Romane. She's not nothing. She's just a person that got sick of hearing him talk. Okay, so uh, how do we work our friend Mateo into this? Does he go? Does he go to Mateo for some kind of help? Is he, like, looking around for assistance? Oh, as a side thing? Yeah. Looking around for assistance. We're going to bookmark that. Put a, uh, put a pin in that. Um, nice. Uh, he, Mateo, we were talking about, like, wasn't there something else we came up with just, like, three nights ago? Where we were watching something, and I'm like, why is it always got to be, like, paranormal smut? Why can't it be something else? It could still be smut, but, like, it could be, like, action smut. We were trying to remember. We couldn't remember what the hell that was. But mm. we did talk about um, maybe it's, like, a buddy cop thing. We were it's just like, talking about that in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah, where we were thinking maybe. Hang on, I'm gonna leave a famous voice note. Oh god. Damn Are it. we gonna? Are you do leave it right this now? in the show? Eh, maybe. Okay, so if I remember correctly, we were talking about um, this kind of buddy cop, but it's also a little noir. Mm-hmm. So it's like Stevenson, you've run off all of your uh, partners. This yeah. is the only guy left who will work with you, and it's Mateo the ghost. Yeah, um, an actual ghost, like a dead yeah. person, is the only person that'll work with you. It's the only person around. And, and, and Mateo's like, God damn it, Stephen. Do I have to work with Stephen? I'm not. Yeah. I, uh. I can't. <laughs> I can't handle this. I can't do this. Uh, so we'll come back to that. There you go. Nice voice message. Thanks. I know now everyone gets to see how the sausage is made. Sometimes when you see how the sausage is made, you're disgusted by it. You want no part of it. You never eat sausage again. We'll see. We'll see you next time. We have no listeners. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if you come back. All right. This so is all for fun. Anyway. We got a psychosomatic person that's convincing themselves that they're a cat. This woman screams, you're a cat, just out of rage, but she can't find the words to describe her rage. So she just points at him and screams, you're a cat. I know. Do, does she become a vessel for like an ancient evil that's just looking for oh. uh, a conduit? What if Mateo, floating around a grocery store, bored in 2024, sees this interaction, gets inside her head, just like he gets inside the vaginas of women in previous stories. Yeah. And then screams, tell him he's a cat. (laughs) Then she screams, you're a cat. And then he haunts this guy and makes him think he's a cat. Oh, there you go. He... Okay. That's a better idea. And then we find out that this is... So maybe, like, at the end, the guy is, like, on his knees at this woman's doorstep. Like, please reverse your curse. And she's yeah. like, I didn't I didn't do shit to you. Leave me alone. I'm trying to drink my orange juice. <laughs> and then it's revealed. Right? Okay, wait. So when Mateo is with him, in the previous stories, Mateo is basically a person that's just kind of see-through and ghost-like. But when Mateo is interacting with him, is Mateo physically there as a person in his apartment or his home or whatever saying, you seem like a cat to me. Like, how does that work out? It's whatever's funniest at the moment. In our first book, Batty for Hattie, A Wisp's (laughs) First Love. Get a plug in there. Available on Apple Books, Uh, uh, Barnes & Noble, Noble, Amazon, Amazon. (laughs) Books... Books a million? Guys, you can find this book anywhere. And you're going to you love find this, this book. book. This is a great book. It's huge. Oh, huge. you're going to love this huge you're gonna book. Love you're going to love this book. book. It's a great book. It's a great book. Anyway, so um, when we wrote that book, we decided that uh, it's funniest. 
Oh, Meow. God damn it. Come Speaking here. of fucking cats. <laughs> it's funniest if the ghosts don't have consistent physics. And yeah. it's whatever's funniest at the moment. So <laughs> I think that we should continue that tradition. Well, what are his options? You said convincing him to be a ghost, which I love. But, like, how do we... Is it that he gets inside his mind? Like, the woman puts his mouth inside her head and goes, tell him he's a cat. Or does he, he could physically... possess her at the, at the moment. Because he's he possessed someone in... Uh, what was that last book we wrote about um, Hanukkah? The Hanukkah the Heist. The Hanukkah Heist. Which you can also find on Amazon, Google Books. <laughs> <laughs> As you hold Iggy. Yeah, in front so of the mic. So cute. Hey, big boy. Um, so it could be anything that's funniest at the moment. He can either possess her and his rage flows through her, or um, he could just be whispering in her ear. He could be subtly slapping oranges out of her hands just for fun to rile her up. Oh, so she's already pissed she before the cat man comes up. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, so there's then. There's a lot that could happen. Then maybe she does just point her finger at him and scream, you're a cat, because she's just so angry but can't articulate her rage. Oh, yeah. So the best she can do is go, you're a cat. Yeah. And I'm then, never so mad that all you can do is cry. Because uh, it's kind of like that. I don't know. Have I? Right? I can't think of I ever have. Like, it's completely stupid, and you can't put together, you know, valid argument about why what's happening is... Yeah, I've been, like, one time in high school, I was in ceramics class, and someone got me so angry, the most I could do was shit myself. <laughs> so I actually Very similar to that, yeah. It's a lot like that. Um, so maybe on her own, she screams, you're a cat, because <laughs> she can't figure out anything else to say, and she's just like, you know, you're the cat. And then Mateo's like, ooh, this is gold. And then Mateo yeah. follows that guy home. He goes, looks like you got whiskers to me. Like, I don't know what Mateo would say to convince him. I don't think he's always saying stuff. I think maybe he's just unraveling like an end of his sweater so that the string is hanging out. Oh, sure. Uh, leaving maybe cat toys around, <laughs> spreading around catnip. This guy doesn't have a cat. So he doesn't see Mateo at all. Mateo doesn't interact with him like he verbally. might. He might. Well, here's the thing. We can either do Mateo completely invisible as a ghost, just doing shit to harass these two people yeah. who are just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sure. Which I think is actually a pretty fun take on it. Yeah, he's a little more invisible. Sure. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Let's okay. do that. Also, in this story that we're setting up, there is no sex whatsoever. Do what would be kind of funny because everything's got to be like a paranormal romance kind of thing. Yeah. Um, do we have it where we have this story of convincing this guy he's becoming a cat? Uh huh. <clears throat> but on the side, we have Mateo meeting maybe another ghost woman and like actually having kind of a romance, like a little bit of a romance. I don't something. want Mateo to be happy. No. <laughs> um, but we can make our two people. Oh, end up the, together at the end. The cursor and the cursee? Yeah. Okay. That's an option. I'm trying to think, like, at some point later in the story, when they're finally talking more, she's like, I don't know how, like, I don't know how to uncurse you. It wasn't really a curse. I was just frustrated. I'm like, you're the dumb cat. Kind of thing. And then, like, later on, They've been talking for a while, and she's like, well, I, I don't want you cursed. It's like, well, I'm still a cat anyways. I just, God, I love string. <laughs> and then she's like, but you don't look like a cat. He's like, I'm convinced I got whiskers. i totally convinced I'm a cat. She's like, I don't see it at all. Like, are you a cat right now? And he's like, partially. She's like, I don't see it at all. But then they're in the kitchen. She's like, what if what if I gave you a kiss? <laughs> it's like something oh, stupid. Oh, yeah. Like, how do we get to that point where they actually make out thinking it ends the curse? We can just jump the shark on that. I don't think anyone's expecting this to be, you know, yeah, no really great. Him. Sure. Oh my god! I know this cat will not leave us me. alone. Okay, so Mateo like draws whiskers on the bathroom mirror, so when he stands in front of a sink, it looks like there are whiskers on his face. Oh my god, I love that. That would be so. Funny. But he doesn't realize he's the but one. But he doesn't that did realize it. that it's. Well, he doesn't yeah. realize that they're just drawn on the mirror. Yeah, because he's stupid. Like wait, you know. Yeah, he could be the, brushing the his teeth, but every time he brushes his teeth, he's so sloppy that the the splatters are making whiskers on the the frost yeah. of the thing, and he's like, "Oh my god, whiskers!" Oh my god, <laughs> it's just entirely in his head. Yeah, for sure. So he finds this woman. Oh, he finds this woman. Says, "I need you to uncurse me." She said, "I I can't. It wasn't actually a curse. I was just mad about the oranges." <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> and he goes, well, but uh, something happened, you know, so what happened? Uh, maybe the supermarket was built on top of where uh, Mateo died. Oh. Do you want to tie it in that way? Actually, somehow? wasn't there the convenience store that Mateo was hung out in all the time way back when? Yes. Well, that's So maybe that most... maybe that got torn down and they put, put a supermarket awesome on top. Heist. So yeah. he's just No, uh that was the uh so what, Batty for Hattie. No, that was, was that uh, the Hanukkah Heist. Heist. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because that's you're where right. Smithy found him to recruit him oh, into that's the right. So maybe like they tore down the convenience team. store and now it's a grocery store. He's just stuck there for some reason. Maybe that's the place that Let's he died. Let's say the supermarket was there first. Let's make this an 80s story. Oh, you want to do it? It's a little bit easier without technology. When did uh, we can make it a little Hanukkah weirder. Heist happen? 2005-ish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, no, it was after that because the main character was... Obsessed with the or, early 2000s, yeah, right? And okay. Twilight. So, this could be an 80s story. I do like what... Didn't he, like, choke? He was, like, doing something and he choked. I forget what that was. He was juggling little leather pouches oh, to earn the yeah. favor of a lady That's who right. was not enjoying it. So... And one slipped down his throat <laughs> and she went to save him and he put her hands down and gestured, no, let yeah. me die. Yeah. And so she did. She held his hands as he died. <laughs> that's right. So that spot that he died can be where all these new places keep getting yeah. built. So before the convenience store, it used to be some kind of like little independent like, grocery store in the 80s. In uh, Gutwater, Georgia. Okay. So now if it's the 80s, this guy is no longer just obsessed with cats in general. He loves Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> There's no... <laughs> It's Garfield. He's obsessed with Garfield. He thinks he's Garfield, not a cat. He thinks he's literally turning into Garfield. He eats nothing but lasagna every day. Oh. <laughs> we got to go back oh, and rewrite did, all your notes. Did Stouffer's exist? I'm sure they in did. In the 80s? I'm sure they did. Hang on, I'm doing a quick Google. Well, you can do it that on your laptop. Really? No. You literally are taking notes on the laptop, but you're going to look up Stouffer's on your phone. Shut up. <laughs> I hope no one can hear the dog whining in the other room. Uh, burp. I'm gonna make 1954. Stofers. He loves Stofers. Okay, it's turned, turned into a Garfield story. Oh, I am so excited about this. This is brilliant. Okay, so brilliant. there's no internet. He's at work as an actuary. But he also reads the paper and sees a Garfield comic. Oh. And loves it. And then he goes out and buys those weird, like rectangular shaped Garfield books that were yeah. big in the 80s. So he's mm-hmm. like, re- so he'll just sit yeah. at work and just read Garfield. They're the, like the same shape as a three panel comic. Yeah. So yep, you yep, can yep, just yep. like so flip, just flip through it. it. And yeah. so then when he goes there and like, well, you know, Garfield would never eat orange juice because Garfield, so he's just Garfield facts. Even though Garfield is orange, he never imbibes <laughs> orange juice. He prefers lasagna. Yeah, lasagna And he juice. like gestures yep. at his Stouffer's lasagna. There you go. And she snaps like a twig. as she should. Like yeah, a twig. Like, like a, a twig. twig. And then maybe, like, at some point in the interaction, he keeps bringing all of his Garfield books to work because he keeps referencing panels from other panels, kind of like you're dealing with with the House of Leaves. Oh, we need references to Gar... Oh, we're going to have to do some homework. Oh, we definitely can. I should show you the Garfield pipe strip thing that was done by uh, Lasagna Cat. Lasagna Cat on YouTube has... It's, like, from years ago, like 10 years ago. They have this thing where they took, like, I think the the soundtrack from the movie Kundun, and they have the brother, I think, of Drew Barrymore get up and do this entire rant about the Garfield comic strip where it's like, Garfield, where's my pipe? Then uh, John saying that, and then it cuts to Garfield smoking the pipe, and he goes, Garfield. And I I was even thinking the other day, like, I want, I want Gertie to watch this because it is so... My friend and I, Jesse, have yeah. watched this like nine times. He <laughs> talks for 45 minutes. You don't have to pay attention. Like, you can be on your phone. He just babbles. And he goes through the psychology of this strip and why it's literal genius. And goes through like how it literally unlocks the meaning of man. It just goes on and on and on with the soundtrack of Kundun in the background. And he talks for the entire soundtrack. So it's like two hours long. Oh, my God. He does it in one take. Okay. It's amazing. It's Mental so if you want, we re- should watch it. Let's do. Oh it. no, it's funny. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's not funny because I guess uh, Drew Barrymore's brother, possibly uncle. I think it's a brother. He wasn't famous. He was mildly famous in the '80s and then like fell off. 
But while Drew has a successful career, he was like homeless and stuff for a while and everything, and like she just kind of ignored him. I well, guess. Drew also had drug problems. When oh, she yeah, was she, young. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People forget about that. But anyways, that can be your your introduction. I know this dog won't stop whining. Uh, that can be your introduction into the Garfield lore. But yeah, so his thing is is like maybe when he talks to her. Um, he's babbling at her about Garfield in general and she's getting really annoyed and then he's got like a big thing of like Garfield books that spill out on the floor because when he's at work he's constantly cross-referencing different Garfield comics just like House of Leaves trying to like (laughs) find like references to like the pipe the pipe thing to whatever else and just like back and forth and back and forth okay well we just took a break I took a Topo Chico cherry Along with a white claw grapefruit. Mix them together and it doesn't taste that bad. Proud of you. Thank you. So, um, we were talking a little bit <clears throat> about the woman. So, he's got a House of Leaves thing going on with Garfield. Because he's obsessed and he's out of his mind with boredom. Right. And he's trying to find meaning and purpose. Yeah. <clears throat> and Garfield is apparently his answer. With her, she should she also have her own boredom and her own kind of obsession to deal with that boredom. Like, that would make sense, yeah. Because they're like the same people that way. What would hers be? Is it citrus? <laughs> <laughs> I, feel I like, guess it is. I feel like that's an easy answer, uh, answer yeah. given how protective she is of over her oranges. That is a good point. You're right. Because she's literally trying to make a pitcher every morning of orange juice. <clears throat> she's obsessed with what vitamin C can do to the human body that science just won't recognize. There is a Garfield strip about grapefruit. Okay. <gasps> is that how they connect? Yeah, maybe it's not oranges. Maybe it's grapefruits. <clears throat> okay. And then that's how they have their bridge. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so the comic strip is Garfield stabbing a piece of uh, half of a grapefruit, saying there's only one thing I hate worse than grapefruit. And then the middle comic is him getting squirted in the face with juice. And the last one is, and that is hating grapefruit. <laughs> so the only thing he hates worse than grapefruit is hating grapefruit. So then that he doesn't learns, make any he sense. He learns to accept. <gasps> this? Okay. Hold on. Okay, so that logic you just used right there can be his way of getting her to accept grapefruit. So maybe, maybe her thing is she hates grapefruit for some reason. Some stupid health reason that's made up QAnon style health reasons for liking grapefruit. Like, it'll help with my bladder problems or something. Whatever she's got going on. She tried grapefruit. She hates it. So she focuses on something else like orange juice. They have their back and forth, but then he's like, there's a Garfield comic that talks about grapefruit, and the worst thing about hating grapefruit, or the worst thing about eating grapefruit is hating grapefruit, which means you should learn to accept grapefruit. The weird conundrum of that comic being the thing I hate more than grapefruit, which is you hate grapefruit, is hating grapefruit. So the answer is then I guess you gotta love grapefruit, because you you hate hating grapefruit more than you hate grapefruit itself, so just learn to love grapefruit. He explains this to her. Like, this is like the like the, the Taoist approach that Garfield has to life. And she's like, oh my god, that is like a finger, like, like one hand clapping itself. Like that whole thing. And then she winds up liking grapefruit. And then her bladder problems go away, whatever it would be that she doesn't want to embrace grapefruit. But then all of a sudden her bladder problems go away and she's like, I will remove your curse from your cat. Somehow. Through her puss. I love that you found that. A stupid comic that was not well thought out. No, it's terrible. It's a terrible comic. The but worst yeah, thing about hating grapefruit is hating grapefruit. We need to extrapolate some larger philosophical meaning. Yeah. So then now she's eating grapefruit because okay. of the Taoist one hand clapping itself approach towards grapefruit. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then she's like, "How do we remove your cat curse?" And then. I guess that's how we have to figure that out. And also, at some point, sex has to happen. It doesn't have to be the answer to his curse. It could be that just, like, she fingered his butthole at one point because she's into that. But then, later, because of him helping her with the grapefruit hatred, she winds up helping him with this cat thing, and I don't know what that would be. 
Or it could be sex. I don't know. Whatever. We'll figure it out when we figure it out. Oh, you want to leave that one open? How about we leave it open for right now? To I the think, artiste? I think this is a great start. <laughs> okay. And you're going to sit down and just go for it. I'm just going to go for it. All right. Nice. Well, there you go. That's an episode. It was great to see you all again. You didn't see anybody. There's like two people listening. Don't flick me off. I think you're using the wrong finger. It doesn't look right. Your middle fingers are kind of thick like thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, I guess the next time we see you, we'll have a finished product. Is that what you're going for? Yeah. All right. There you go. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Want to contact us? Don't. This isn't about you. But if you have to, my email is glenn.nuzzles, N-U-Z-Z-L-E-S, at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter, uh, at House Nuzzle. Uh, but don't bother us, because we're too busy working.